Oklahoma City bombing statistics. 30 foot across crater in a street. 8 feet deep. Right next to the building. First floor of the building, first and second floor depending on how you look at it, had exposed columns that held up the front of the building right there. These lower columns were hit with pieces of the vehicle and whatnot. One of them is confirmed to have been completely destroyed and other another couple of them were bent and stressed and he parked the vehicle right next to where he had observed before that there was a daycare center now there's a dead space under there and you might want to notice the shape of the explosions damage basically by taking out the front columns and the fact that they're only two or three columns deep through the whole building depending on where you're at from that point that means that half the building has lost all of its support for that section that's what happened so let's just go forward so that's what it looks this is uh, actually based on a picture that was taken as you can see um, basically that's the deal though uh, the, the front part of the building almost like a facade was held up by those exterior columns this is the explosion and its basic simplistic method and that one beam there is taken out the others to the side were warped, bent, damaged, and as things fell in, that took them out even further. The center point could collapse and the rest could happen. Also, the shockwave went in underneath and pushed up on the pre-stressed cement. Pre-stressed means it has cables or bars in it to fight gravity. If the explosion is underneath the column, the stressing of the cables increases the ability of it to break on top, lifting up the center of any suspended not column, but beam made of pre-stressed cement, allowing the said cement to crack on top, weaken, fracture, fail completely, and then on the rebound, cave in. The shock wave from the explosion going upward, because it's reflecting off of the ground, is exactly what you would expect to cause that kind of damage if it was only mechanically biased, aka pre-stressed, with rebar and cabling to fight gravity. This would push up on the building. Therefore, the pre-stressing would be like taking advantage of the mechanical tension being applied and using it against the building. This is probably not something he realized at the time when he set off the explosion. This is the effect afterwards. The majority of the damage happened <clears throat> from just the front columns here and the in here being taken out and or damaged and then it caving in. One extra section here lost only one extra column back here. The front of it was held up by individual spaced columns that are further apart. Instead of having 10 columns going through, it had five total. One of them didn't die. So look for the center point between here and here. It's about right. This is pretty much what you'd expect. Also, I'd like to point out, if you're curious about it, that the shape of that inlet area for where you're parking means that it was technically slightly underneath the edge. It provided an overhang for people to go into and come out of the building to go to a, a place where you could temporarily park and drive away. It's a drop-off point. That means the explosion went up through the second, well, third and fourth floors because these are two floors here. There was a two-floor space that was open to the exposed area and was hit with a shockwave underneath and the shockwave created patterns underneath that pushed through and under the building, lifting up individual floor sections just enough to take advantage of the pre-stressing of the cabling and spring it. And as you might imagine, it could have caved in more here or here. It happened to take this column out. I don't know why. That's for someone else to go into. But let's go on to the next piece. This is another diagram of it. Um, I, I, this is actually easier to re look at than the other one. <clears throat> Transfer girders in front, etc., and the floors are claimed to have been pre-stressed cement. I don't know that. All I know is, if it's pre-stressed, it's stressing against gravity. This would be pushing in the same direction the walls, pillars, and floor sections are all supposed to do, as well as transfer girders, columns, etc. All right. And the blast damage isn't inconsistent. Again, these uh, columns started at the front, dead space, columns here, dead space, column in the back. The, the columns that were damaged fell in, then the front fell in. Okay, I mean, it, it, that's it. Okay, let's go on to the next. 
this shows where people died. This is where mechanical shrapnel, impacts, fire, whatever happened. Uh, fatalities, and then yellow are admitted in hospital. Treated and released are blue, and green is not injured. People who were not injured at the time, this is all the people that were in the building. <laughs> As you can see, a lot of people died in the area it caved in on because that's what you would expect. The explosion happened and it caved in almost immediately afterwards. Explosive device loaded in truck. That's the 6.8 foot to 8 foot deep crater, crater depending on how you look at it. Uh, 11 inches of asphalt and 6 inches of concrete directly underneath the vehicle were destroyed. That's a very powerful explosion. Deciding that couldn't damage a building or cave it in by basically pushing up on and dropping transfer girders. Okay, would you mind showing me why that wouldn't work? Really, again, someone pointing out that these were pre-stressed cement. I had to look that up to make sure that I hadn't looked it up before, and I had. There was a bridge that caved in X number of years ago or months ago. I don't even know how long ago it was. And it had pre-stressed cement in it too, but it's only stressed in one way. You don't bias it for every direction. That doesn't make it stronger universally. It just means it's stronger in one way, usually against gravity. Obviously, if you make it to where gravity can't pull down the center of it, that means there's tensioning pulling up the center. If you apply a shock wave from an explosion, that will push up on it and it can fracture. And that's the approximate location of it. It was not hundreds of feet away from the building. Someone asked me about that. I've even seen that posted before. No, it wasn't. And this is uh, from a page that's trying to disprove that it happened. But they acknowledged it was right there, right next to the area. And actually, it was probably even closer, to be honest. It's almost, but not quite, underneath the overhang area. Ammonium nitrate. 500 kilograms, it says. Uh, Ukraine. Uh, it's a bulk explosive. <clears throat> it's used because it's extremely stable. You have to use something close to a stick of dynamite to set it off, because you do. This is what it looked like originally, and that's for scale, for size. These are two floors here, and this is an empty space that's almost two floors tall with these pillars. All three of these pillars were hit with an explosive shockwave. One of them was physically destroyed, apparently, and the other two were weakened enough that they caved in. Once this starts caving in, because it has nothing to support it for a full half distance of the entire building, it's going to pull down on and apply stress to this one and this one, and that will cause them to cave in. And this is another angle that seems to show that the back edge of it, uh, at one time or another, was an open space. I don't know if that's accurate. I think that may be a wrong image, or, or I don't know. It looks screwed up. I can't tell. But I thought I'd increase it because it was one of many images that came up, and some websites were being stubborn about me being able to find it, so I'm going to provide it just to be obnoxious to those websites. But you can see it's mostly empty space. Almost a full half of the building was suspended above the ground, effectively. And it caved in from an explosion that was underneath it, pushing up on cement that was engineered to fight gravity, and this took advantage of that. And I doubt that anybody knew that that would happen, or that that could happen. People don't build buildings assuming they're going to be hit with an explosive. Even the Pentagon was only assumed to ever be attacked by drop bombs or a missile attack from the side, never being hit by an airplane. But, you know, whatever. The explosion, if you're not aware of it, uh, there's the crater. It dug out the damn ground. <clears throat> Things get blown up. You don't think they're going to blow down. But that's how much damage was done just to that one spot. And the shockwave went in, and th this is where the pillars are. These pillars here held, this one failed, and it caved in another section of it, almost all the way back. These are the three pillars that broke in front. A full half of the building almost fell in. Virtually all of it. This is what it looks like from the front. This is during them, uh, basically, after they've cleaned it up as much as they could and got everybody out they could and removed the bodies as much as they could. This is during a ceremony before they decided to demolish it. Um, now I'm going to get to the questions that uh, brought this on, but again, no, that's not impossible. All it has to do is an induce a collapse. And the shockwave mostly being under half of it and being able to push back in there, I'd be surprised there wasn't one more column damage. And these don't look necessarily like they're, they're going to go, but they could have. 
Would that writer with Anfo have blowed that pre-stressed concrete building in the manner it was reported? Yes. Pre-stressed concrete includes tendons of individual hand-drawn wires or cables of hard-drawn wires or bars of high-strength alloy steel introduced to counteract the tensile stresses that will be imposed in normal services, otherwise known as gravity. Or if it's a bridge, again, gravity with pressure and dynamics. It's not designed to tolerate having an explosion push up on it. Next, wasn't the building buried in the pit within a week? No. After 9 a.m. approximately, April 19th, when there would be fewer people in the building maybe, instead of doing it the way he wanted to do, 1995, within seconds of the truck bomb's detonation, half the building collapsed all by itself, and May 23rd, 1995, the remains were imploded after the investigation was done and everybody agreed that it would be okay to do so. The building itself was not salvageable. Is rebar stripped clean and twisted? No. This isn't just an explosion damaged building. Explosion didn't do all the work. Gravity did most of the work. The blast destroyed floors and columns were destroyed and or bent or stressed. <clears throat> Caused a collapse damage way beyond the blast. See also progressive or disproportionate collapse induced by all sorts of things. <clears throat> For a blast hundreds of feet away, no. The truck bomb was right next to the building and damaged buildings blocks away as well. The explosive shockwave was more than enough to do this much damage and it pushed up on the lower floors and then let them break and collapse. And it took out enough columns to do this and the building had basically three ranks of main pillars holding it up and in the front it used oversized wider spaced pillars half as many that may have actually contributed to its downfall. Do AMFO explosions happen in homeless camps near the Liberatar pits? Seriously, thanks, man, and glad your cough is better. Well, thank you as well, and do appreciate the nice words. And only if we have too many beans. So let's review. Uh, most diagrams show it really a lot further away from the building. It's not hundreds of feet away, and it wasn't even really 30 feet away from the building. It was parked in a divot in that sidewalk that was for people being dropped off and, and brought in. Uh, because of, well, because it was an entry area. The lower two floors were made into an open uh, a mezzanine level kind of thing going on. And any explosion under there would have pushed up on the front of the building. It did, in fact, collapse about the same way that it should. And judging by the notching effect here, the explosion primarily went into right into the daycare center it would be you know it could he could have done this at any end I do have to point out something here with the way the building is constructed and everything and the way it's shaped um, any location along here would have been a dangerous place to put the bomb it would have caused probably the same effect unless you don't understand that well anyway uh, not directing that comment by the way at the person asked the questions next this isn't the first time a truck bomb has been used to destroy a building this just happened in the United States we're not used to this happening and I hope we never get used to it happening but it did happen uh, the conspiracy theorists are just simply a waste of time at this point thanks for watching have a good day good luck with that